Hello, I am live. I am already so unburdened by the fact that I'm just talking to one device. Um, and I think and feel and believe that this sound is gonna be so much better today, even though we're just on Facebook because I'm doing it through my phone. Um, hi, Chris. Excellent. And um, my, I had high hopes for a fancy microphone to perform through for you, but uh, it broke because God is testing me. Um, and I'm just so happy to be here. I'm really happy to be back um, sitting here and singing to you. Hi, Marty. Hi, Shane. Um, so you guys, been quite a two weeks. Um, remember when the global pandemic was the only thing that was happening? Um, I don't feel able to talk about, hi, I love the waves how I feel. Hi, Tamara. Um, joyful, terrified, hopeful, rageful, all the things um, that made me want to do this 12th episode of Songs from the Chrysalis and call it Songs of Change, um, which just happened to coincide with the fact that we were doing songs from the 70s, I don't know, by accident or from my idea of songs from the 70s that I love, and then the 80s and then I was like, oh no, we're heading into the 90s just as Songs of Change is coming. So some interesting stuff is coming up. I am actually really nervous for this show, but thrilled um, that I get to do it. Um, so I'm gonna play some tunes. Um, and I'm running the guitar through my amp, and you guys can write in and give me feedback on how it sounds, and probably I won't be able to fix it, and then we'll just move on. And that's the way I roll. Um, this is a song, it didn't start out meaning this, but let's say that it's a prayer for the opening of minds and changing of perspectives. Think about a highway that dig into a deeper dream. Well, I just want to stand inside and find a little place to scream. Don't you think I know every diagnosis that could be wrong with me? Would I? Yeah. Now think about a canyon that's underneath your night pillow. Wanna swing out wide, maybe even let go. Oh, don't you think I care? Don't you think I wear my disorder on my sleeve?
hey Thomas and Megan and Arlene and Glory and um, yes it's been said that this part feels like romper room but I, I don't care I like seeing everybody and welcoming them hey Shane thank you um, yes I I can't tell you what a pleasure it is just to be looking at one <laughs> device and seeing your comments on your names the way a live stream is supposed to work um, yeah so you guys would not believe the number of since I started Songs from the Chrysalis, which is what this series is called, the number of butterfly metaphors and chrysalis things that have been showing up in my life. I was actually on a FaceTime call with someone who was like, oh, by the way, and showed me her little netting cage in which she keeps her three butterflies that just hatched from chrysalis and the bloody and weird process that that was and the skins that were lying there from before. And she doesn't know about this series. Um, maybe she's watching, I don't know. Also, this week, uh, there was a giant roach in my apartment, and I killed it with a yoga block, which there is a metaphor in there somewhere, and you guys can just discuss amongst yourselves what that might be. Um, this is another song about openings and changes. <laughs> you haven't noticed they're not here this is a solo series uh, my name is Rebecca Hart for those of you that I don't know um, and Thomas says what better a yoga block than a block to your yoga excellent and the roach will be reborn as a butterfly you guys top that um, yeah so I have been doing this series for a while this is number 12 of songs from the chrysalis I sometimes, in the regular life that we may go back to, play with a band called Rebecca Hart and the Wrong Band. Um, and this week's joke, coming to you from Chris Natras, bass player for Rebecca Hart and the Wrong Band, goes like this. Why did the racist chicken cross the road? For a photo op with a Bible. I thought that one was pretty good. <clears throat> All right. You know, uh, speaking of astrology, which we weren't, I am a Cancer and I like to come at things sideways and obliquely and through metaphor and I'm just war I'm warming up to the themes of this week in my own little way. Um, and right now, I just want to, um, oh mom, hi, you made it, great. Um, hi Patty, oh my gosh, long time, no anything. Um, and uh, I'm gonna play a little happy song just because I, I think I need it and maybe you do too. And this is about traveling, which we can't do right now, so. Go. <laughs> I still have that last song in my head. Um, mm -hmm. Every pretty dress I own talks behind my back about all the days long gone. We were on a maze. We were. Sweetness, carry a microphone and a cherry stain. 
broken light bulb back my way. Like it follows by, like as if to show how I want what I want. And I know what I know, yeah. Sweetness carries a microphone and a cherry stain and a chain. I could entertain, I could tell a lie, how I would remain right here at home. Mm. And that was when I realized that the song was not about traveling, it was about a fear of intimacy. And you guys were here. <laughs> Fun. Um, hi, everyone. Hey, I forgot to say also, my name is Rebecca Hart. If you are new to this series, this is the 12th episode of Songs from the Chrysalis. I do this every week on Sundays at four. Um, my Venmo, which is where the tip jar is, is Rebecca-Hart-5. And this week, all tips and donations are going to anything that has a Black Lives Matter hashtag uh, next to it of any kind for obvious reasons. Um, yeah. Enough about that, let's move on to the protest songs. Um, you know, I think it's really, there's something very magical about, I mean, like there's all the crystal eye imagery and stuff that keeps coming. It's like, there's a certain, if you build it, they will come quality to making any kind of art, I guess. But um, it's just also funny that as I declared this, my 90s hour, um, someone I haven't seen since pretty much the 90s uh, friended me on Facebook right before this, who used to come to concerts of mine when I lived in California and, um, that's just like kind of a great blessing from the ether. So hi Liz, thanks for having you. Hey David Ross, thank you for shouting out the Venmo. I really appreciate it. Um, also RebeccaHart.net is where the mailing list is. I write a little note um, on Wednesdays and I send videos and stuff that I'm making with the band and with other collaborators. Um, Jacinth Graywood and I are recording very casual uh, versions of some Iron John songs and I'll send those out too. So speaking of back then, I have a little note to myself that says detune your guitar here. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, back when I wrote this song called White Lie, it is on the Live at Joe's Pub album, which I had to go look up on YouTube to remind myself how to play it. Um, I did this a couple weeks ago and at that time I also said, I originally wrote this for George, about George W. Um, and <laughs> I thought there was something to protest. Can you remember back when there was like, that seemed like a really big deal, which it was, I don't mean to um, in small in anything. That's a word, right? Um, but I felt like this was a good time to bring it out for Songs of Change. And I remember we, we were saying, this was for my old band, Rebecca Hart Project, and then Rebecca Hart and the Sexy Children. Yeah, and uh, we were saying, it's too bad this will become obsolete at some point. Um, and that not only has that not happened, I think it's actually more appropriate. So this is from the bottom of my very young songwriter's heart. Uh, uh, how's the guitar sound? You guys can tell me um, after. No, can't do this. Sure walk around here like you know 
I do about the thunder showers and the rain in my home. Is the company sweet in the ivory tower? You sure walk around here like you are. Just now say yes to the I had to raise that a half step to be able to sing it now. What's with my being a baritone back in the day and not as much anymore? Um, very strange. Hey, thank you to everyone who is tuning in. Hi, Kelly. Sean Randall, speaking of when I first came to New York and back in the day, the first gigs I ever had in New York, um, I'm going to say pretty much, were um, at a poetry spoken word series called West Side Rhymes, and they adopted me as like their... Um, their pet musician for a little while and listening to all the poetry um, both really inspired me and jump-started me in terms of political writing and also just in general because you know what poets do they listen to your lyrics and at first I was like that's so great and then I was like maybe you could not listen to this part because it's, it's not really finished yet um, speaking of which at, at those poetry series they used to do a fun thing where every time someone got up to do something new, everyone in the room will go, new shit! So could you just do that? I'm about to play a new song. You could just do that in your own house. New shit! <clears throat> I can hear you, it's great. Um, this is my Trump song. I didn't think I was gonna write one. I have a note here to myself. Deep retune your guitar at the end, which I was about to forget to do. That would have been not fun. Yeah, all right, this song is called Blue Canary. Um, it came out of nowhere. Um, it is kind of a show tune actually I think and it's uh, really it's Donald Trump who sings to the canary in the coal mine <clears throat> and it goes like this two three four two three four oh oh blue canary I heard about you when you fall that's when it's scary you're looking fine let's have a ball I'm thinking of myself I mean about your health I Leave the disaster in the hall. Oh, oh, oh. Three. Oh, oh, blue canary, such an attractive little bird. You seem so wary. What have I done? What have you heard? That I fiddle while Rome burns. Judge a man by what he earns. Run from Peter to pay Paul for the disaster in the
That's why other people write my rhymes. I have the best people, the best people! These are band solos right here. Fiddle. I hope you're playing trumpet. We'll probably end this with a drum fill. Then we go, oh, 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 Blue Canary. You've always been my special girl, sweet sedentary. But now you're screaming bloody murder, murder, keep it down. I got my name all over town, got my image to preserve. And I'm always thinking, thinking about myself. I mean about my wealth, I mean about your health. Look, I gotta take this call. Leave the disaster in the hall. Leave your disaster in the hall. Leave your disaster in the hall. Picturing a big West Side Rhymes reaction. I'd like that to be like a lot longer. So Matt Gilfer, if you're watching, I'd like a big fat um, fiddle solo in the middle. I like to write a song that I don't like to stop playing. <clears throat> all right, so you guys, speaking, I love all, all these little hearts really move me. Um, thanks, hey Nicole, hey Greg. Um, thank you, Chris, for writing the new shit down. Hi, Nancy, oh my gosh, this is really heartwarming and awesome. It, it was good to take a week off, but I'm very happy to be here. Um, and I'm just gonna keep going. You can do whatever you want. Sing along, uh, make some tea, what have you. But FYI, um, the dual theme of this uh, show this week was Songs of Change and also the 1990s Why Not? Um, uh, because we were doing the 70s and the 80s and somehow this happened. And uh, kids, if you were around and playing guitar um, actually, let's say if you were around and playing guitar and you were female in the 1990s, um, you were around for the birth of this very weird genre called female singer-songwriter, which is how I used to be described in print and by people all the time. I know I've said that before, but it still makes me laugh. Um, it's weird enough that singer-songwriter is a genre of music, but female singer-songwriter was like a special thing where you played the Lilith Fair. Um, and anywho, kids, if you were uh, listening to songs of protests uh, around that time, you could not escape Miss Ani DeFranco. Um, so I'm gonna do an Ani song. Uh, this is a song that moves me very much. Uh, full disclosure, have not been able to get through it without crying in rehearsal, but usually that goes away by performance time. Um, <clears throat> let me get these lyrics out. This is my favorite song of hers because actually at the time I was sort of not really all about Ani, to be honest. Um, uh, to explain why I think would be boring. And uh, so I won't, and I'm actually not even sure why, but I was like, I like her, but I'm not going to the shows and all that stuff. But this song, I remember hearing the song and being like, I think this is a perfect song. Um, weirdly playing it again, I was like, it doesn't have a chorus or a bridge or any of those things we think important songs have to have. So that's interesting to me. And um, I really love this one because it's it feels very vulnerable and straightforward. Like she was just really sharing from her heart. And um, something, that has bummed me out in the past couple of weeks is how many explanations of why all lives matter is not a thing I've had to read on social media. Um, they've all been good explanations with good metaphors, uh, but it's a bummer to me that that has to be explained. Um, we're all learning, um, but uh, yeah. And this song relates to that feeling for me because I feel like it's sort of a feeling like that I've had in the past where I've you know, quoted a statistic about how many women are killed by their male partners and, and the, the man listening to me was more uh, concerned with being like, not all men are like that than the fact that that was happening. Like, of course you're not, but do you care that it's happening? You know, um, anyway, this song is about uh, sort of asking for your humanity to be considered. And um, I really love it. And it's called 32 Flavors and I'm gonna play it. So I stop talking so much. I am 32 flavors and then some And I'm beyond your peripheral vision So you might want to turn your head Cause someday you may find you are starving And eating all of the words you just said Both my parents taught me about goodwill 
and I have done well by their names. Just the kindness I've lavished on strangers is more than I can explain. Still, there's many who've turned off their porch lights just so I would think they were not home and hid in the dark of their windows till I passed and left them alone. God help you if you are an ugly girl Of course too pretty is also your doom Cause everyone harbors a secret hatred For the prettiest girl in the room And God help you if you are a phoenix And you dare to rise up from the ash A thousand eyes will smolder with jealousy While you are just flying past try to give my life meaning by demeaning you. And I would like to state for the record, I did everything I could do. I'm not saying that I am a saint, oh I just don't want to live that way. I would never say that I'm a saint, but I will always say, squint your eyes and look closer. I'm not between you and your ambition. I am a poster girl with no poster. I am a 30 flavors and then some and I'm beyond your peripheral vision so you might want to turn your head cause someday you may find you are starving and eating all of the words you just say You almost made it. <clears throat> We've got a ways to go yet. Cannot be when a mascara run. <clears throat> okay, uh, ooh, not that many ways to go yet. I'm actually, I'm up against it here. Okay, so, um, this is a song, uh, I am not a person, generally, I don't think of myself as a person who, like, sets goals and goes after them and achieves them and, like, you know, does, and, like, pushes through the frustration and makes shit happen. Um, and, and yet, every once in a while, this is how I know that there's some other thing happening when, with, when I'm not really in charge. The song is in charge, or the play is in charge, or the thing, you know, uh, because sometimes it's just not up to me. And uh, on Friday, a little voice said to me, on Sunday, you will do Goodbye Pork Pie Hat from Joni Mitchell's Mingus album. And I said, I'm so sorry, I think you have the wrong number. Um, I am not equipped in many ways to do any part of that song. Um, so I don't think I will. And the voice said, uh, nope, so I have it right here. It says right here, you're going to be doing uh, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat. And I was like, this show is on Sunday, and I am not a real guitar player, and um, that's a really hard vocal line, all this stuff. And it was like, well, I suggest you get to work. So basically, um, I kind of have done nothing except work on this song since Friday. Um, yes, a way of avoiding life. Um, lots of things happened outside. A huge protest parade went by my window. There was a, a brass band with a sousaphone. A lot of things happened. Um, nothing. I, I wanted to be distracted. I was like, I'd like to watch TV now. And the voice was like, no, you will play Mingus again. Um, so sit tight for a second. Um, because this, this does involve some talking because this is a really meta song and I just want everybody to really appreciate it. I don't know if you know the Joni Mitchell album Mingus. Um, it was made in 1979, but it counts because I didn't know about it till the 90s, so I'm doing it here. Um, and it was her collaboration slash tribute album with the great jazz man Charles Mingus. Um, and on that album, they both worked on it. Um, some of the music is by him, some of the music is by her, but mostly it's sort of about and for him. And um, Mingus asked Joni Mitchell during the making of this record to write lyrics to his classic song, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, which is an unbelievable honor I cannot even imagine. Um, and she did, and um, Mingus uh, died, I believe, before this album came out. Now, Goodbye Pork Pie Hat is Mingus's own tribute to a friend, that, a musician that he admired, Lester Young. It's also called Elegy for Lester Young. Lester Young died before Mingus's album came out with Goodbye Pork Pie Hat on it. So that's like the layers of tribute that's going on. 
Joni Mitchell talked to Mingus for a long time about his love for his buddy Lester Young and his music, and she decided she wanted to write it about their relationship, but also about Lester's experience being a black man in America and playing music um, in the time that he was playing music. And um, I, I wrote this down. That album came out in 1959, the Mingus album. Um, so this was a long time ago. And uh, Joni, if I'm not mistaken, took the saxophone part played on Mingus' album by a man named John Handy and wrote all of her lyrics to that music, um, which I think is also really amazing. And so it's like her tribute to her friend and musician who died, written through his tribute to his friend and musician who died. So if you're following that, that's great. Here's the thing I meant to lead with that I didn't lead with. My meditation teacher, um, stay with me, um, teaches a meditation that involves mantra, chanting Sanskrit mantras, stay with me. And um, he likes to say that when we chant, the, the mantras that we chant were arose spontaneously from yogis in deep states of consciousness thousands of years ago. And when we chant those same mantras, we're getting to stand sort of in the mental space that those enlightened beings were in when they chanted them. And that's sort of what we do when we listen to a song or piece of art. We get to stand in the headspace of the person who made it. So I like to think that when Joni wrote this, she was standing in Mingus's love for his friend Lester and and the, I feel that the reason I was driven to work on this is because I wanted to stand in Joni's love for Charles Mingus um, and honor this great um, sharing of respect, care, and learning and artistry across cultures and races and um, time. That being said, please try to forget that this song is a jazz standard because it's not going to sound like that. I just really wanted to do this. Um, <clears throat> and for the record, it went really well in rehearsal. Um, hey Shane, thanks for listening. Hi Jonathan, thanks for listening. Um, yeah, anyway, this song goes like, like this, and I'm going to play Matt Gelfer's baritone guitar. It's not plugged in, so I, I hope you can hear it. Um, let me take a stab at this. I'm also reading the music, sorry. It's going to be a little less performative than usual. When Charlie speaks of Lester, you know someone great has gone. The sweetest swinging music man had a porky pig hat on. A bright star in a dark age when the bandstands had a thousand ways of refusing a black man admission. Black musician, in those days it put you in an underdog position. Sellers and chitlins, when Lester took him white, where's my spot? Arm in arm went black and white, and some saw red, and drove them from their hotel bed. Love is never easy, short of the hope we had for happiness, bright and sweet. Love is never easy street. Now we are black and white embracing out in the lunatic New York night. It's very unlikely we'll be driven out of town or be hung in a tree. It's unlikely tonight these crowds are happy and love. Children are up dancing in the streets in the sticky middle of the night summer. Celebration of taxi horns and fun arcades We're right or wrong Under neon Every feeling goes on For you and me The sidewalk is a history book And a circus Dangerous clowns Balancing dreadful and wonderful Perceptions they have been handed Day by day Generations on down we came up on the subway on the music midnight makes with Charlie's bass and Lester's 
saxophone in taxi, horns and brakes. Now Charlie's down in Mexico with a healer, so the sidewalk leads us to two little dancers dancing outside the black bar. There's a sign up on the awning that says pork pie at bar. And there's black babies dancing to Thank you very much. <clears throat> that was an honor to get to do it. Thank you for hanging in there and listening. Um, you guys, I'm going to close it out the only way I know how to. And the only way that I think would be uh, appropriate uh, with some Tracy Chapman. So first of all, I want to say thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it on many, many levels. Uh, my name is Rebecca Hart. This is Songs from the Chrysalis. I am here every Sunday at 4. Um, the tip jar is at Venmo, Rebecca-Heart-5. This week, all of your tips are going to Black Lives Matter um, donation sources, just so you know that. Um, thank you for being here with me. My mailing list is at RebeccaHeart.net. Please sign up, and I will send you once a week chats and videos and stuff about the upcoming uh, Sunday shows. Hey, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Chris, for being here all the way through. Thanks, Mom. Um, yeah, Greg, that's a pretty good lyric. The Sidewalk is a history book. She's good, you know. Um, that was fun, but please go get this album. Also, a fun 90s memory, um, me walking into uh, Borders or something, like a, a music store and going up to the counter with two CDs in my hands, and one of them was Joni Mitchell Mingus, and the other one was Eminem, My Name is Slim Shady. And uh, the guy behind the counter was like, um, and that, I just feel like that's complicated on many levels. Anyway, uh, you guys, this is a, a classic protest song um, by a woman who I love and who really inspired me when I was a young songwriter. And uh, I'll wear those lyrics just to make sure I don't mess it up. Here it is. And um, if you know it, please sing along. I can't hear you, but I'll pretend that I do. Don't you know we're talking about a revolution sound? Like a whisper. Don't you know we're talking about a revolution? Sounds like a whisper while they're standing in the welfare line, crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation, wasting time in the unemployment lines, sitting around waiting for a promotion. Don't you know? We're talking about a revolution Sounds like a whisper Poor people gonna rise up And get their share Poor people gonna rise up And take what is theirs Don't you know you better run, run Talking about a revolution and Finally the tables are starting to turn Talking about a revolution While oh, they're standing in the welfare lines Crying at the doorsteps of those armies of salvation Wasting time in the unemployment lines Sitting around waiting for a promotion Don't you know Talking about a revolution sounds like a whisper. Cause finally the tables are starting to turn. Yes, finally the tables are starting to turn. Talking about a revolution, oh, oh yeah. Talking about a revolution, oh, oh. Talking about a revolution.
Thank you guys so much. This went by way too fast for me. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week. Um, Venmo Rebecca Hart five for donations to Black Lives Matter organizations. Um, and this is the awkward part where I don't know how to finish it. Yes. Bye. Love you all. See you soon.